again uh, uh, topic is uh, pilon fractures and this is the ankle joint the ankle mortis the mortar and the pestle is the talus and when this hits against that it breaks and then you have the pilon fracture this is a 75 year old male urologist he fell and these are the x-rays and this is the CT scan and this is the condition of his distal tibia what will we do let us see first of all don't catch hold of the tibia please look at the airway breathing and circulation in these patients because they can have associated problems uh, in such a severe injury Schatzke in 1887 said that immobilization of an intraarticular fracture results in joint stiffness and immobilization of an intraarticular fracture treated by internal fixation leads to much greater stiffness depressed articular fragments which do not reduce by closed manipulation and traction are impacted and will not reduce by closed means major articular depressions do not fill with fibrocartilage and anatomical reduction and stable fixation of articular fragments is necessary to restore joint congruity and metaphyseal defects must be bone grafted to prevent articular fragment dis uh, uh, displacement metaphyseal and diaphyseal displacement must be reduced to prevent joint in overload and joint congruity and correction of axial deformity is necessary to reduce uh, to restore joint stability immediate motion is necessary to prevent joint stiffness so these were the principles that he elucidated the classification is by AO most popularly used is the A type or the extra articular B type the partial articular and C the complete articular the incidence is usually in the young adults rare in children and elderly patients males are more uh, affected and it have involves 3 to 9 percent of all tibia fractures and associated injuries 25 to 50 percent the mechanism of injury is usually a, a compression fracture you may have a virus or a valgus a, a, a component and here when there is a virus component you have more combination of the fracture with an oblique uh, with without a fracture of the fibula in a valgus you have a combination less but with an oblique fracture of the fibula when there is shear a pure shear is produced then you get a transverse fracture almost without much combination of the tibia and here when there is shear com with compression you have a combination of the distal tibia and almost a transverse fracture of the fibula so this is the spectrum of fracture you can get all sorts of fractures in the distal tibia and more important is the soft tissue injury you can get a large spectrum of soft tissue injuries from the very minimal to the extremely and you see those blisters there some of them are white some of them are red and the white are less ominous the red ones are more ominous because they involve the deeper layer of the uh, uh, skin the injury management of soft tissue envelope is the key to a relative success or dismal failure Uh, the ankle soft tissues it is covered with thin skin and there is absent muscle and adipose tissue and lack of deep veins and this is the reason for its vulnerability to uh, complications you have this still you have a dense trabecular structure there is uh, thin soft tissues the axial loading will lead to a typical fracture pattern and severe soft tissue injury decision making and prognosis you have to consider three zones one is the articular surface the second is the metaphysis and the third is the fibula x-ray evaluation the routine x-rays ap lateral and oblique traction view is most important for those of us who don't have ct scans but if you have a ct scan facility then all intraarticular fractures i must repeat require a ct scan to get good uh, planning it reduces the surgical surprises now this is the traction view this particular fracture when it came some of our consultants said it requires talotibial fusion open reduction was not possible but just by uh, giving a little traction and uh, 
and uh, external fixation temporarily produces that you, you changes the whole uh, uh, attitude towards that fracture. The articular components of pylon are the anterolateral, the medial and the posterior fragments, the major fragments. The timing of surgery is very important here. If the minimally uh, injured soft tissues, if you get them, then you may consider uh, immediate uh, fixation uh, of the fracture. That is within 0 to 6 hours. But majority of the pylon fractures are surgically delayed for at least 7 to 14 days to, for the skin to wrinkle and uh, the swelling to subside. And, in with, and during that time, you can do joint bridging, external fixator, calcaneal traction, and limb elevation. <coughs> Surgical options are definitive external fixation with unilateral or circular fixators or open traction and internal fixation using conventional plates or minimal invasive techniques. Spanning articulated external fixation indications are for the ideal for a very committed cases where open reduction internal fixation may not give you the desired results. Contraindicated with ipsilateral talus and calcaneal fractures. Stable internal fixation, atraumatic technique, anatomical reduction and early pain free mobilization was the principles of the AO and it has stood the test of time especially in articular fractures. Unfortunately, these techniques led to the dark ages of soft tissue management and ill-advised extensive surgical approaches, the fracture stripping, prolonged tunicate times and bulky implants led to increased soft tissue injury and this was a recipe for disaster. In the early, in the years of 80s and 90s, you had a lot of papers coming out with gross complications, amputations, infection, fusions of the, uh, 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 of the ankle following uh, treatment of these fractures. We have learned from our errors and current techniques emphasize the soft tissue injury and its management. So you delay the surgery, span the exfix for most, uh, included in most protocols and percutaneous and limited approaches will uh, protect the soft tissues more. The complications nowadays in current techniques is between 0 to 10 percent which is ex ex accepted. Spanning X fix, external fixation on the same side and delayed plating, all these papers show that they have decreased uh, complications. Respect the biology, indirect reduction techniques, using of external fixator, femoral distractor, joysticks, percutaneous clamps, circlage are different ways of doing indirect reduction. This is an example of a fracture treated by just a small incision and a circlage wire which reduced the fracture and, and we could uh, stabilize it. Th these are percutaneous reduction with clamps, pointed reduction clamps and when will you fix this? As I said, if you have very minimal soft tissue injury, you can do it as a single stage. Rudy and Algova said reconstruction of the fibula, reconstruction of the tibial joint surface, autogenous cancellous graft and support by a buttress plate for the tibia can be done at the same time. But most often I must emphasize that this is not the routine and usually it is done in, in uh, after some time. This is a case where immediate uh, reduction was done with just three screws for the tibia because of the nature of the fracture and a support at buttress for the uh, fibula. Multiple stage procedure is the routine and uh, you do in two stages. Stage 1 is close reduction and joint bridge and external fixator. You may fix the fibula at stage 1 or, or leave it like that. And stage 2 you do definitive reconstruction which is within 7 to 21 days. If it is an open fracture, you stage it in three ways. The stage one is emergency management of the wound and stabilization of the fibula if is, is possible. And then the second look at 48 hours where you can re reconstruct the tibial metaphyseal uh, block and then a stabil definitive stabilization and, and the third stage where you fix the uh, tibia to the uh, diaphysis. This is an example of a grade 3 open fracture. Uh, treated by initial external fixation and then uh, delayed open reduction and internal fixation using a clover leaf plate and a, uh, and a uh, one third tubular plate for the fibula. And this is the result and this is the function of the foot.
at one year. The approaches are usually extensile anteromedial, the anterolateral and the postrolateral approach. This is the anteromedial approach. This is uh, the extent of uh, exposure that you get in the anteromedial approach. And the uh, anterolateral approach is used for displaced chaput fragment when there is a wound on the medial side or a lateral articular combination. The uh, an anterolateral approach, this is the extent of approach that you get and you have to be careful of the superficial peroneal nerve. This is an example of uh, minimal osteoplate osteosynthesis and these are the newer implants which are uh, available for the distal tibia, the lateral plate, the medial plate and the metaphyseal plate. These are some examples where we did a reverse oral flap and fixation at the same time and there's its function at five months and this is what happened to the urologist which I showed you earlier. On, uh, we did fix it with the two plates, one on the medial side and the lateral side, both locking compression and we got a fairly good uh, intra-articular reduction. The another case, CT scan, post-op. Now, Marsh said that most have some ankle pain, they do not run or play sports and measurable effect on general health status. Most rate their outcomes as good or excellent, arthrodesis rate only 5% and most feel that they improve over a period of years. So however you treat them, high energy fractures with severe associated soft tissue injury have unpredictable outcomes. If you try to keep complications less than 10%, you are safe and results are generally not great but if you stay out of trouble, not awful. The implications of current knowledge is that do not be quick to suggest arthrodesis based on severity of the injury or quality of reduction. Patients improve for a long time and most do not require arthrodesis and complications must be avoided since they produce bad outcomes. Once again, thank to Ashok Johari and Hitesh for the opportunity given and thank you for your patient listening.